Welcome to a Legendarium special about Eunice, the magician who led a slave rebellion against Rome. In this episode, we will learn about the extraordinary life, incredible deeds, and tragic death of Eunice. During the 2nd century BC, the Roman Republic expanded throughout modern-day Iberia, Africa, and Greece. War meant huge numbers of men, women, and children coming into the Republic as captives and sold as slaves. Whole villages might be bought by merchants from victorious Republican armies. Upon coming to their destination, they would be stripped completely naked, save for a tag worn around their neck, which spelled out their age, skills, and any potential liabilities. The auctioneer then paraded them up and down the platform for a crowd to bid upon. Fortunate slaves, typically those with valuable skills, might secure a good place in a household. Unfortunate slaves went into the mines or into brothels, where they likely died a few years later. Sicily became home to 200,000 slaves on an island with a total population of no more than 600,000. Romans branded, shackled, whipped, and then drove their slaves out to work the fields in chain gangs. As a reward, the slaves were kept confined by the hundreds in underground barrack cells called Ergastula. Sometime in the late 140s, a governor of Sicily set up a stone on the mainland. In a commemorative inscription, he boasted of rounding up 917 slaves who escaped Sicily and of returning them to their masters. In short, one smelled rebellion in the air. I can't imagine why. In the year 138 BC, more than a generation before the birth of Julius Caesar, the chroniclers reported terrifying omens. In Rome, a slave girl gave birth to a boy monster with four feet, four hands, four eyes, and four ears. In Sicily, Mount Etna erupted in flashes of fire and spewed gouts of molten rock and burning ash that torched property for miles around. Those omens might have spoken of a man whom the Romans would have considered a monster, the slave Eunice. Eunice came from the Seleucid Empire in modern-day Turkey and grew up as a devotee of the half-woman, half-fish goddess Atargatis, who was married to the sun. Though born a free man, Eunice became a household slave in the house of a rich Roman named Antigenes. Most likely, Eunice became a slave at the hands of Sicilian pirates who ran a booming trade in the eastern Mediterranean. A man of keen intelligence, he became known as a prophet. He hid a hollow nutshell with holes drilled in it and filled with sulfur inside his mouth. When Eunice spoke, it appeared to fill his mouth with sulfurous smoke, as if a burning lamp. While in a trance, he could supposedly deliver prophecies. And as a devotee of Adargadas, he dressed like a woman, wore makeup, and probably castrated himself, to the horror of his Roman owners. Nonetheless, Antigenes enjoyed wheeling him out at dinner parties to amuse his guests. Eunice frequently assured the assembled Romans that he would become a king one day, and painted vivid word pictures of the state that he would rule, a kingdom in the west with the customs of the east. Amused Romans took to cross-examining him about his kingdom, not realizing that he would one day bring it into being at their tragic expense. Sometime in 138 BC, a slave owner named Damophilus, an arrogant man of great wealth who vied with his bloodthirsty wife Megalus in devising new ways to punish the slaves, became a spark upon Sicily's dry tinder. Whipping became an everyday event on the Damophilus' remote estate. He flaunted his wealth by driving about in a coach drawn by stately horses and always guarded by armed slaves. Damophilus also kept a pack of beautiful slave boys for his pleasure and appalled fellow Romans with his foul manners. His slaves grew so filled with hatred for him that they chose to murder him. Yet that would mean the crucifixion of every slave in the Damophilus household, and they sought the approval of the gods. They believed that Eunice, the miracle worker, could tell them if the gods would approve of their desperate course. Eunice 
gave the murder not only his blessing, but his support. On his orders, 400 slaves gathered in a field shortly before midnight and exchanged vows by night over sacrificial victims. They then armed themselves with staves, sickles, and kitchen spits, but a desperate hatred drove them on. With Eunice at their head, belching flames from his mouth in the darkness, the slaves stormed into the city of Enna. Other slaves within the city walls joined the invaders. Vengeful rebels tore infant children from their mother's arms and smashed their heads against the ground. Eunice himself murdered both Antigenes and a former master of his named Pytho. His men slaughtered the other slave owners of Enna and gang raped their women. Rebels tracked down Damophilus and Megalus outside the walls. They spared their daughter, who had been kind to the slaves, and even dressed their wounds after beatings. However, the rebels dragged the murderous power couple back into the city. Eunice held a mock trial for them in the amphitheater. When Damophilus proved better able to defend himself than expected, Eunice silenced his arguments by cutting his head off. Megalus's former slave girls then threw their former mistress off a cliff. Eunice then put the city's blacksmiths in chains and set them to work making iron swords and shields. Thus armed, the rebels seized the southern port of Acragas from the complacent and flabbergasted Romans. Yet Eunice did remember the smirking kindness of the men who once gifted him with bits of meat at those long-ago dinner parties. He allowed them to live and tell the tale of a slave who became a king. Slaves on Sicily came from Macedonia, Greece, Iberia, and Africa, but the longing for freedom and the charisma of Eunice united them. Eunice found his most bloodthirsty and effective followers among the slaves set to watch their master's cattle and sheep in the mountains. Since Roman masters did not pay to feed or clothe these herders, they took to robbing farms and passing travelers with near impunity. They carried clubs, spears, and staffs to control half-wild dogs. They fed a diet of raw meat. These men made mountain paths impossible to any Roman traveler and served as Eunice's eyes and ears in the countryside. In Enna, Eunice organized 6,000 men armed with axes, hatchets, and slings. He fed his troops by raiding estates around the city, and his numbers rose to 20,000. Claiming to be a member of the Seleucid royal line, he then declared himself the king of a Sicilian kingdom which he called Antiochus. He even issued crude bronze coins with his face carved upon them. When the king took Taramenium, a port midway along the eastern coastal road, he also took Catina and Morgantia, important supply centers home to the island's mints. In his capital, Eunice created a kingdom in the west with customs imported from the east. Eunuch priests ran through the streets of his capital with their severed genitals in bloody packages. Shock-haired King Eunice himself married his patron goddess in a ritual marriage in the custom of his homeland. Eunice even laid siege unsuccessfully to the city of Syracuse, remaining camped outside the walls for so long that his army had to resort to eating fish, despite it being sacred to the half-woman, half-fish goddess. In 133 BC, Gaius Titus finally arrived with two legions. Despite being outnumbered, Eunice defeated him. Titus's fellow Romans became so furious with him that they cut his toga to tatters, forced him to stop bathing, and made him stand barefoot on guard duty throughout day and night. His horsemen, for their defeat, became slingers, the lowest of the low in the Roman legion. Next came a commander named Publius Repulius in 132, a low-born man with no tolerance for nonsense. He placed the rebel-held city of Taramenium under siege. His blockade forced the rebels to turn on each other, first eating the children, then the women, and then finally each other. Finally, an Egyptian slave betrayed the other rebels and opened the gates to the Romans. When Repilius took the city, he whipped every able-bodied fighting man to bloody ribbons and then threw them off the cliff as they still lived. 
By late 132 BC, plague came to Eunice's capital at Enna, and the people sank into starvation and misery. Eunice himself fled the city before it fell, though his royal bodyguard chose to commit mass suicide rather than surrender to the hated Romans. Eunice holed up in a mountain cave, joined only by a cook, a baker, a masseur, and an entertainer who arranged his banquets. A pathetic end for the man who would be king. His kingdom shrunk to a cave and four subjects. By the time the Romans finally captured and took Eunice to Morgantina, his flesh already disintegrated into a mass of lice and squirming worms. There he died, and Eunice's kingdom and dream died with him. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.